Hi everyone, I'm Jen Lucas, Managing Editor of The Knitting Circle, and I'm here today with Brenda K.B. Anderson, who's the Managing Editor of the Creative Crochet Corner, and we're here today to have a spa day. It's relaxing and crafting time. So over the next hour, we're gonna talk to you about the projects that we have in our spa day download, which you can get, and so you can download your patterns and follow along with us and make yourself some nice spa day projects for yourself or a friend. So as we're getting started um, and you're getting that download, uh, make sure that you're saying hello in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. If you're knitting or crocheting while you're watching, maybe let us know what projects you're making because I, I know I want to know. So uh, let, us, <laughs> let us know what you're making and uh, we'll talk to you a little bit about each project as well as maybe some of the tricky parts for each one. And we're just going to sit and chat and knit and crochet and just have a good time. If you have any questions for us along the way, of course, be sure to leave those in the chat box as well. So before we get started, Brenda, I know how you got started crocheting and crafting, but maybe our viewers at home don't know. So why don't you tell us, how did you get into the fiber arts? <laughs> Well, my mom was a very, is a very crafty person, and so she already knew how to crochet and knit and sew and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So she taught me those things when I was pretty young. Um, knitting, I was a little bit older, but crocheting, uh, I think I was probably like maybe five, four or five or something oh, like wow. that. And uh, sewing that young too. I learned how to sew on a sewing machine when I was six, which oh, seems wow. crazy to me now, <laughs> thinking about that, but because I have young children and I'm just imagining that. Um, but yeah, ever since I was little, I've been doing all these things. And um, yeah, and for a long time, up until recently, up until the whole COVID thing, uh, my main job was to sew and to teach people. And now I've kind of shifted over into the yarn world more now. So Nice, cool. Yeah. So yeah. Jen, do you want to tell everybody how you got started? Yes. I actually don't know very much about oh, yeah. your origin story <laughs> yeah, here. I'm kind of <laughs> actually having like a full circle moment on my like crafting journey right now. So um, I started uh, knitting um, a little bit after college. So I was like 23 when I got started uh, knitting. And what happened was when I was in college, um, my friends and I were very into the TV show, The Golden Girls. And we used to, that was what we would watch rather of than course. studying, of course. And in that show, if you don't know, Sophia uh, crochets. Well, we didn't know the difference between knitting and crochet <laughs> at all because none of us were that type of crafter at that time. Mm -hmm. And so for my birthday, my friends bought me yarn and needles and a book called Learn to Knit in Just One Day. And they're like, you can be like Sophia. But they didn't know that Sophia was actually crochet. <laughs> So I, um, you know, picked the book up and did learn sort of the basics from that book. So yeah. I um, am completely self-taught on knitting. With crochet, um, I taught myself, but then ended up taking classes sort of to okay. confirm what I was doing was correct. Yeah. Um, but my full circle <laughs> moment here with the crafting is that um, this weekend I'm going to attend a uh, Golden Girls convention with that those is friends, so awesome. and I am crocheting myself a sweater. <laughs> and my friends have convinced me to dress up as Sophia. Of so, course. You know, I, yeah. So I kind of it's kind of a weird way that I worked myself into that. That is definitely yeah. a complete circle there. Yeah, and it sounds like like your job before was like still pretty crafty. Like yeah. you know you were sewing versus like mm -hmm. I worked in a lab testing wastewater yeah. <laughs> so, yeah but it's weird how we all kind of come into this craft you know yeah, um, there's lots yeah. of interesting stories out there yes. if any of you guys want to mention like how you learned how to yeah. craft we'd love to hear that I too. always want to know how people got into the craft so checking in the comments here I see uh, we do have a few people saying hello we have Stephanie from Panama City Beach Florida we have Amber from Fargo North Dakota so we are so happy that you're all here and we are really excited to get started. So I think what um, we're going to do maybe is talk about each project a little bit. And so I think you are going to start first mm -hmm. with uh, one of the uh, crochet projects that you made. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I made these little Dahlia face scrubbies. Um, they're very textured and they're super fun. And the thing I really like about these is they can just use a very small amount of yarn. We all end up with lots of scraps and mm -hmm. things. So um, you just find like a lighter weight cotton yarn, or if you wanted a larger one, you could certainly use a larger hook size than what I recommend in the pattern and a worsted weight yarn. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you how to begin this and how to make these um, <clears throat> little popcorn petal stitches that have lots of texture. 
All right, so the first thing we start with a slip knot. So we'll draw a little E shape, flip it over onto the yarn that's connected to the ball, put our hook underneath there and pull that up. And then actually we're gonna start, I was just kidding about that. We're gonna start <laughs> with a magical loop. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing, except we're not gonna tighten it all the way. All right, so I'm gonna chain one. And if um, we're gonna be going through these projects a little bit more quickly because we have lots of them to share in one hour. So if there are things that you need a little bit more help mm -hmm. with, the, the Knitting Circle and the Creative Crochet Corner have lots of helpful videos and we'll try to mention what ones to check out. But you can, do, uh, you can look at the Adjustable Loop or Magic Loop videos uh, to see another way to do this too. All right, so we're gonna start with six single crochets in that loop. So we insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's the first single crochet. And we're gonna do five more. One, two, three, four, five. And in the pattern, you will find all the information on what specific yarns I'm using, um, hook sizes, needle sizes, everything. Mm -hmm. That will all be in your pattern download. So we have six single crochets in the center, and then we start doing those fun popcorn puddle stitches. I am going to flip to my section of the download where I made a chart. This is, I'm a very visual learner, so I really like to make charts to help um, keep myself on track when I'm teaching, mm -hmm. yeah. but also to help all, those of you who are also visual learners. Um, because sometimes when there's too many words on the page, I just can't even... I just get halfway through and then I'm like, what am I even reading? I'm you know? the exact so. same way. I was very resistant even to crochet charts at first, but really then once I realized that crochet especially uh -huh. is very much a depiction of what you're making. Yeah, it looks it, like what you're making. Yeah, it does make yeah. it easier. For crochet for the lines of crochet <coughs> mm -hmm. text can get very long sometimes. Yeah, because you have to explain where you're putting your hook, mm -hmm. how you're putting it in the stitch. Right. There's so many different variables to yeah, all that. Exactly. It's just, too many words for me, but the written directions are also included in here in case you do not like the charts. That's okay too, mm -hmm. but yeah. I love the charts. Yeah. All right, so we've got our six single crochets. Those are these little black plus symbols in the middle. Then we're gonna do round two, which starts right here with this number, number two. So we start our popcorn puddle stitch by chaining one, and then we are going to work five double crochets into the next stitch. So this is still part of the pop popcorn petal stitch. So we insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's one double crochet. I'll do that again. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's the second one. So we're gonna do three more. I'll do those a little faster. One, two, three. And then here comes the fun part, which is you take your hook out of your loop and you're gonna count your stitches backwards. So one, two, three, four, five. Putting your hook into that fifth, the top of that, well, it's actually five when you're counting backwards, but the very first double crochet you did of the this, of this stitch from front to back. Then you put your working loop back on your hook. So I'm kind of losing it a little bit there. Here, let me give you a tip, actually. If you pull up your loop a little further than you normally would, you won't lose that. So count backwards. One, two, three, four, five. Insert front to back through that first double crochet. Insert through that working loop, and then you can tighten your loop a little bit to a normal size. And then you're just gonna use your hook to draw that through that first double crochet. Then to complete the pedal stitch, you're just going to chain one. So for each petal stitch here, it includes the chain one, the five double crochets, removing your hook from the loop, putting it, you know, putting it through the first one, drawing that working loop back through, and the, the next chain. So all three of these parts are all included in one popcorn petal stitch. So then, as you can see in this chart, we're going to be working not only that stitch, but also the single crochet into that first single crochet. So we're squeezing a second stitch in here, and that helps the increases will help give us that round shape. So we're gonna work into that same stitch and do a single crochet right there. And then I'm going to repeat that whole 
thing all the way around for each stitch. Okay, so um, maybe while you're doing that, should we check the chat? Do you yeah, think? let's all check right, it. Let's see. We've got lots of comments here. We have uh, Lisa says hello from NC, and my uncle taught me how to crochet. Cool. That's cool. We have Esther listening from Switzerland, Shannon from Ohio, Dawn from Washington, Angelique from Toronto, loves to both knit and crochet. We both do, because you yeah. do knit too. You knit yeah. and crochet, so yeah, do I. That's awesome. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Angelique says, my mom taught me to crochet when I was seven, and I taught myself to knit with the help from Craftsy. So that's oh, awesome. Cool. Um, let's see, what else? The Emanator says uh, they're from Madison, Wisconsin. My mom taught me to purl and eventually to knit. When she passed five years ago, I got her crochet hooks and I took a class on how to crochet because I couldn't figure it out and I've been crocheting ever since. That's so nice. Awesome. Oh, Christine's been knitting and crocheting since 10 years old and an organic chemist. That's awesome. Oh, cool. You know, it is interesting. There are a lot of people that have those sciencey jobs like I had and then yeah. they get very into the knitting. Uh-huh. I've noticed that. Yes. So oh yes, Trees says charts are nice once you learn the symbol, the symbols, which right. is true. Yeah, that's that's sometimes the tricky part is knowing the symbols. And I know with mm -hmm. crochet, a lot of times I tend to confuse half double crochet and double crochet on my right. charts. Right. Um, let's see. Um, Daria says I taught myself how to knit with books and with Marley Bird videos. Yes, Marley Bird has cool. lots of great videos. And I have repeatedly tried to teach myself to crochet, but cannot seem to grasp it. Well, Daria, I'm happy to tell you <laughs> that uh, <laughs> Brenda here actually made a 14-day Learn to Crochet series. And um, so you can check that out on the Creative Crochet Corner website. And I also made a 14-day Learn to Knit series on the Knitting Circle website. So if you're somebody watching that crochets, but you want to learn how to knit mm -hmm. or vice versa, you can go check those out. Um, both of them are right on those websites. And I'm sure we'll have somebody drop a link to those down in the comments as well. But yes, I love, I love hearing about how people have started out with their knitting and crochet journey. I do too, because people come from all different backgrounds right. and different places, and it's always so fun to hear yeah. how they got here. Right, yep. <laughs> how are we doing on our scrubby over I am there? just about around. Awesome. Um, so I have five of my puddles made so far. I have one more to make. So remember to put that single crochet, sneak it into that same stitch you did your puddle stitch into. Chain one to begin your next puddle. And then five double crochets, one, two, three, four, and five. Remove your hook, count back five stitches, put it from front to back, put the loop back on, pull through, chain one to complete your uh, popcorn puddle, and then do the single crochet in that same stitch. So now we have six of those petals going all the way around here. And then I'm just gonna talk you through the rest of these um, so we can move on a little bit and make sure we have time for everything. But when you begin working the third round, you are not going to be working into this petal. You never actually work into the, the petals on this, uh, on this uh, pattern at all. You just skip to the single crochet between the, the first petal and the second petal, and you work three single crochets right in that same spot. One, two, three. Skip the petal, and you can kind of push it forward a little bit to get it out of your way, if that's helpful, or over to the side, so that you can see the next single crochet. And then you're gonna do your three single crochets into that single crochet, like that. So you're gonna work all the way around putting three single crochets into the single crochet that's between each petal. And then on the following stitch, you go back to making petals and single crochets. And you'll notice this time, instead of putting, uh, for each stitch, each stitch doesn't get a popcorn petal and a single crochet. For the first stitch here in row number, or round number four, you have a petal stitch in the first single crochet, then a single crochet in the next single crochet. And then on the third one, you have a petal stitch and a single crochet going into that. And that repeats all the way around this little section. This is a one-to-one -one ratio, a one-to-one -one ratio, and then you have two into that stitch. So that repeats around and gives you enough increases to keep it flat. So you'll just continue um, 
working from the chart and the directions, and then you just fasten off and weave in your ends, and you're done. And I didn't even block these. I just figured they look cute enough as is, yeah, and I really like the texture. I just left them alone. I thought they looked just fine. So Yeah, and I feel like, too, because these are kind of made out of that 100% cotton, yeah. right? So I feel like... You're just gonna start using it and then wash yeah. it anyway. And then, yeah. then you blocked it. Yeah, then you block it, <laughs> exactly. Accidentally. Use it and block <laughs> it at the same time. That's awesome. I love these. I'm definitely gonna make some of these. These are so cute. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Do you wanna show us uh, one yes. of the scrunchie patterns? Yes, Jen? so I got very into making scrunchies. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, <laughs> I'm like, I'm making scrunchies. This is So I've been making all different kinds and I have two different kinds of scrunchies in the in the uh, download for you we'll talk about this first one here which is the blue ridge scrunchie which is all knit so all i've done is taken one of these hair ties and then um, worked my knitting around it and so just whatever hair tie you like for your hair um, these are just the ones i happen to have you know they come in like a pack of like i don't know 50 or whatever yeah. you know so i have no shortage of them <laughs> um, but whatever hair tie you like for your hair um, you can use and then I'm just going to quickly show you, it's really not that hard of a pattern. We're going to be knitting in the round, um, but you do have to manage your hair tie as you're working or you're not going to enclose it in your knitted fabric. So, I'm so curious to see how this is Yeah, done. so basically all I did was I cast on my stitches and then after casting on my stitches, I just stuck the hair tie up on one of the needles here. And so this particular pattern is very easy because it's just like, and it says exactly in the pattern what to do. It's like knit three rounds, purl three rounds until you're done basically. Uh -huh. But all you're gonna do then is just knit. So you put the hair tie on there and then you joined your yes. round after you put the hair tie on there. So yes. it's already part of the circle. Exactly, it's it's like exactly. So I cast on, stuck the hair tie up on one of the needles and then just started knitting. Uh -huh. And so here I'm doing it with double pointed needles, but you can use whatever like small circumference knitting. I also have one started here on, um, on Magic Loop 2. So when you get to the end of your needle, and it doesn't matter whatever needle you're using, whether it's Magic Loop, two circs, whatever, you can see here now I have my free needle, but I have my hair ties like hanging down. Well, if I went and just started on the next needle here and left my hair tie now i'm not oh. capturing it in yeah in the middle of the fabric you, it's going to stick it's out it's going to stick through your fabric exactly you're making your <laughs> and now i'll be honest i've made a few of these and of course like every once in a while there was a time when like you i did forgot. miss it and i just kind of on the next row just kind of pulled it over it does make the hair tie a little weird in there but uh -huh. like you don't have to necessarily rip the whole thing out if you don't want to but the main thing is just then when you get to the end of one needle just pop it back up onto your next needle where your stitches are that you're going to be knitting from okay. and then just keep going and that's real there's that's really all there is to it it just keeps it completely enclosed and then at the end you're just going to basically whip stitch the um cast on and bind off together and then it's completely completely enclosed in there and you can I have a hot pink one in there you can kind of see and that's it and so this will really work with any size um, you know uh, hair tie that you have um, I find that you want to basically just make your fabric so that it's like at least two inches longer than the circumference of your hair tie. So oh, this, uh -huh. this particular hair tie was like six inches in circumference. So I knit the fabric until the fabric was like about eight inches. You'll just, again, you're just knitting three rounds, purling three rounds, and then just do that for as long as you want. The, mm -hmm. You know, the more you do it, the more fabric you'll have. It'll be a little scrunchier. Um, <laughs> but I've been wearing these in my hair like all the time now. And so these are really fun. You can just use leftovers. The only thing I would say is like, think about like what kind of material is gonna work for your hair. This particular mm -hmm. yarn that I've used here is like a cotton bamboo blend. So it's like really 
um, pretty smooth, but maybe you want to use mm -hmm. something that's silk or a silk blend. You know, they, there's all different kinds of yarn. Mm -hmm. I personally probably wouldn't put anything too fuzzy in my hair, but I have seen scrunchies online where people will even, um, you know, hold a strand of mohair or something. Oh. But I just feel like the fuzz would end up like in, in my hair. in my hair. Maybe. But that's just me personally. Maybe it'd be a little grippier though if you had like mm -hmm. really like slippery hair yeah if you yeah, had like thin hair yeah kind of like yarn. yeah that might help so yeah you can really experiment um this yarn here is a dk weight but it's kind of kind of like your scrubbies just really whatever yarn and mm -hmm. the appropriate needle size for this and yeah that's all that's all there is to this one it's actually really simple and the hardest part is just remembering to keep moving that um, hair tie up onto the needle. So that's yeah. all there is to this one. Cool. Um, so what do you have next for us? So the next thing I have is this headband. So I have two versions here. Um, they're made with the velvet yarn, which when did we start calling chenille yarn velvet yarn? I don't know. <laughs> I'm is not the same or is it not the same? I don't know, actually. <laughs> if you know, let us know. But um, I just it's noticed like, there's so much velvet yarn in the store and it looks like chenille to me, but maybe there's some specific thing about what chenille really is. I don't know. I, it looks like a little, to me, your balls of yarn there look like a little bit thinner than what I think of, of like oh, chenille, chenille yarn. Okay. But I mean, I don't actually know. Yeah, I don't know. Somebody knows, let us know. Yeah, <laughs> we're curious. Okay, so the the I really wanted to learn to make something out of this velvet yarn mm -hmm. and I've been thinking, oh, it'd be so fun to make like a little headband or something decorative like that. but. When I first got it and I worked up a swatch, I realized that this yarn is has no elastic. Like, there's no elasticity in the yarn. Here, here's if you try to stretch it, it doesn't stretch out at all. And so, you know, when you crochet it, you can cr crochet it fairly tightly, so that gives you a little bit of stretch, but it doesn't really bounce back. Mm -hmm. And so, I couldn't figure out how to make the hair, the headband in a way that would actually keep your hair out of your face. Like mm -hmm. I wanted this to be a spa style thing and to, you know, actually make it useful, not just pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but so then I was thinking about Jen and her scrunchies because I knew she was making scrunchies mm -hmm. over there. And I was like, oh, she's using an elastic thing in hers. I can use an elastic thing in mine too. Mm -hmm. So I figured out that if I crochet over loops of elastic, these are very thin elastic cord. You want to find elastic cord that it, you shouldn't need to pull on it too hard because then that, that might make it want to slip off your hair. But if it has a little more give to it, mm -hmm. that's the better kind of el cord elastic. Mm -hmm. And I just crocheted over a bunch of these. You can see here in this half made sample, all the little tail ends of me tying these together. I had five of these and I would lay it on, crochet over it do another row without crocheting over it and lay a next one on and crochet over it um, to give yourself, see how much, this has a whole bunch of stretch and it bounces right back. It keeps itself in place on your, hit, on your head. Um, all right, so I'm gonna show you how to begin this and I will be going through it a little bit quickly. Um, so if you have questions about how to work a single crochet stitch, I'll be showing you, but this, you know, this yarn, it's velvet yarn, so it's very fuzzy and it's a little bit hard to see. Um, if you need a little more detail, then just look at the Creative Crochet Corner website and how to do this, a, a single crochet. So I begin mine by working into the bottom bump, which is if you flip your chain over, there's all these little dashes on the bottom, opposite from the Vs that we normally crochet under. And I do that so that I have a really nice and tidy edge on both edges. It looks exactly the same as your last row that way. So, um, so I will chain on the appropriate number. This is actually less than what I suggest. I'm making a doll size headband yeah. really for We're this sample. We're going for the doll this time. <laughs> uh, and so you get your chain and then you will take your ball of yarn, send it through the hoop, okay? Like playing croquet, you're gonna just send it right through there. So it's on your strand of yarn. And that's when you make your turning chain. And try to keep your knot close to the beginning of your row. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can slide it around later, certainly. So we're going to do just a chain one. That's our turning chain. And that anchors that elastic in place. Then we're gonna work into that bottom bump. You just insert your hook and keep the elastic running like a, right along the top side of your chain. So you're gonna work around it. So you oh. yarn over, pull up a loop, 
yarn over, pull through two. You're just kind of encasing it as you go. That's very clever. So then, why well, thank you. Yeah. So you'll insert your hook into that bottom bump once again. I know this is difficult to see in the velvet yarn. It's under the bottom bump. We're just laying that elastic across the top, yarn over, pull up a loop, and see that goes right around that elastic and holds it there. And yarn over, pull through two. That encases it some more. So you will continue working these single crochet stitches into that bottom bump and give yourself a little extra time on this first pass because it is a little bit tricky to see in this velvet yarn and it just takes a little bit it's a little more fiddly mm -hmm. when you have that elastic yeah. there but once you get that first one done it's like a lot faster once you have that first one done so let me show you what that looks like and when you get to that very end you're going to actually turn your work this was the best way for me to keep from getting confused instead of going around and around and then you would add elastic and then it wouldn't match up it would it was just too confusing so i just decided to go back and forth and turn rows and then seam it together later so i've reached the end of all my single crochets then i do a yarn over and turn my work and then i'm going to just work single crochets all the way across Let's see, Lily. Oh, Lily says, I like that sneaky way to put in the <laughs> elastic. I do too. <laughs> yep. Oh, I, we, we have some commentary on chenille versus, oh, awesome. versus velvet. Me. So An Angelique's coming through for us here. She says, uh, she's talking specifically about the uh, Bernat blanket yarn versus their velvet yarn. Oh. And uh, Angelique says, chenille is different to velvet in that it is a soft, fuzzy yarn with a caterpillar-like appearance. And it is produced using cotton, acrylic, rayon, and olefin. So maybe... Oh, maybe, different fiber maybe types it's and maybe different a slightly fiber. different construction yeah, in it. Yeah. Because I think that this velvet yarn is polyester, but I'm not 100% yeah. sure. But it is in the pattern. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to know, yeah. you could just look. All right. I'm just going to work my way to the end and then I'll show you how to add the next loop. Oh yeah, somebody else is saying that, uh, Therese is saying that they're both woven but the difference is the fuzz. The velvet's fuzz is created by cut threads where chenille's fuzz is caused by the brushing of the fabric that teases oh. the fibers and chenille is considered to be crushed velvet. Well. I'm now I'm learning new things too. Wow, you guys are so knowledgeable. Yeah. See, isn't this fun? Yeah, it is fun because I, I usually am just using regular old smooth yarn. So I <laughs> really I don't haven't used like chenille yarn in such a long time that yeah I never never really thought about it. But that's really cool. Thanks thanks yeah. everybody for this letting was, us know. <laughs> this was my first time using the velvet yarn. It always kind of called out to me, but I always was like, oh I don't know. I have to think of the right kind of project, right project for that. Like yeah. I just. Um, wasn't ever really quite sure what I would use it for, but then, yeah, this headband thing popped into my head and I just couldn't let it go. All right, so I've almost reached the end of my row. One more single crochet, and then I will wait to do my tr tr uh, turning chain until I get my next elastic loop ready. So every time you're gonna add an elastic loop, you take your yarn ball, send it through your elastic loop, and just pull your elastic loop right up close to your hook. Then you can do your chain one. See how, how that's already in, in closing that? It's just sort of holding it there for me. And then in this pattern, none of the chain ones count as a stitch, so you're just gonna work right, your first single crochet goes into that first stitch there. And just remember to leave that elastic just running along the top edge of your work. Cool. Let's see, we do have a couple of questions here. Uh, Ziamara asks, could I use that, I like that we're calling it the sneaky elastic method. Could I use <laughs> that sneaky elastic method for socks so they stay up? She says that's unrelated to today's training, but. Yeah, I think you could. I think you could too. And I do know that they make a very thin elastic that, um, I mean, I've, I've never crocheted socks, I've only knit socks, but um, they do make a thin elastic that you can hold alongside your yarn. I'm sure you could do that with crochet too. Um, or yes, mm -hmm. you could definitely, I think like you could get that thin elastic and 
do the same sneaky elastic. Yeah, I really thing. think you could. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I haven't tried crocheting with the thin, I know you're, what you're talking mm -hmm. about, and I've been curious to try that, but I don't know if that would, like, well, maybe it would make it snap back in more. Well, you know, it's like hmm. laying along each yeah. stitch going up and down. It's not this way. You can make it to whatever size you want, and it's going straight through in a straight line that stretches and coming back instead of, you know, yeah. being run through all the stitches. I don't know. We should all do I, an experiment. Yeah, all I'm more hearing about is that. that we need to do another yeah, we one need of these lives together and try we need it to out. Learn more. So. <laughs> all right. So after you've gone back and forth, all the wrong side rows, you are not going to be putting the elastic loops on, but all the right side rows, you're going to be adding that elastic loop. So you've done five elastic loops. The very last row is with the, the elastic. And then you're going to just make sure you adjust your elastic just so, try it on, make sure it's really the right size. And in the pattern, I have you make it just a little bit longer than I thought you would need it to be. Mm -hmm. And to tie, I tell you to tie your knot, but like not like super tight. Mm -hmm. So that way, once you get this part done, you can try it on, make sure it's the perfect size, adjust your knots, then, then really crank them down, make mm -hmm. them really tight. And then to close your headband, you can just use your yarn tails and you can do a little bit of um, gathering as you are closing it. So we're going to go from this point across to here and just weave in and out next to the edge, just kind of doing like a little running stitch right here. And then, <clears throat> and then you're gonna come back on the other side and I do know some of these velvet yarns, I looked at reviews of velvet yarns before I bought mine. Some of them, they say that the, their velvet yarn fell apart. This particular kind did not for me here, but you could certainly use just a similar colored yarn to do this if because you're mm -hmm. gathering your, your threads in, it might, I don't know, have a better chance of breaking at this point. <laughs> so if you're using a different brand and it's breaking on you, then... Yeah, then you're just gonna pull it in so it's fairly tight and then you have all these little yarn ends. And you can choose if you want them on the outside or the inside. Um, I chose for the, the headband that I did with this little bow piece, I left them on the outside so that way um, it would be covered twice. So let me show you about, this is actually what that, the bow piece looks like. It's just a square. You go back and forth and turn rows and then you do an edging round all the way around to <clears throat> finish it off and then here we'll skip over to this part and then we just do a little oops I have a knot in there just do a little um, gathering stitch across the bow to create the you know how the bow it, the bow shape. it looks like a knot in the middle of the bow but it secretly is not not it's secretly is not, it's not so I'm just doing a stitch a running stitch from one point to the next on the bow like that to kind of gather it in and then you can um, go back and forth a couple of times you will take more time and make sure that you get all these stitches I'm just going to do this quickly and then make sure it's about the right width that you want and so you can see how when I put this on it is going to sandwich all these little yarn ends mm -hmm. in between so they will not show and then there is a third piece which is this little rectangle. And you need this rectangle whether you're putting the bow on or not. If you're just doing the knot, <laughs> the knot or not. The knot or not. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, then you will just have a piece like this. I like to twist mine so it looks more like a knot before I placed it around and stitched it. Like, see how it looks like you actually yeah, tied a so knot cute. with that little yeah. tiny twist in there? But if you don't like that, so you clever. can just, you know, straight up do that and then stitch it. That looks mm -hmm. cute too. But I do want to point out one more thing about this headband um, before. So once you decide whether you want this on the outside, which if you're putting the bow on, you can put it on the outside or on the inside where it will be covered by your knot or your, your knot rectangle piece. You can cover that up. Um, regardless of the way that you're doing it, it's best if you can get all these little knots to stick up all your, your little yarn ends and then you can just do some stitches over them to keep them from poking through because they just wanna, they'll probably end up worming their, their way up and out if you just let them you know, stick up straight. But mm -hmm. if you just do some little stitches, they don't have to be perfect or really all that you know, neat and tidy because this is all going to be covered. 
by either the knot or the bow and the knot. So you just go back and forth like this to kind of camouflage those ends and keep them from poking out. See how you can hardly even see them anymore? Yeah. And this, the velvet yarn really helps to kind of hide stuff because it's got so much pile, it's very fluffy. So you'll get that all situated, do some stitches there, weave in your end, then you can put this bow on top if you're using it and just stitch straight through here, do some stitches in and out through there, and then you will add this piece around there and stitch the ends together on the back side, but also you can just do some little stitches. I did some stitches right next to my the edge of mm -hmm. the um, the edge of the fabric that's twisting and, and I couldn't even see it. See? Just blends yeah, right in. Yeah, blends so right in. That looks awesome. So it looks like it looks like a knot, but it's fake. It's a, fa it's a faux <laughs> knot. It's a fake knot. Yes, faux, of course. Faux. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh, Trista says, I used the velvet yarn to make a crochet hair scrunchie and it is luxurious. So Ooh. I love the idea of using this for a spa headband. Excellent. I, yeah, that's awesome. And Lily says, I think I'll try it for doll and plushy clothes for neck and arm openings and reuse elastic from new sneakers, you know, oh, like yeah, sometimes good idea. Yeah, that's a great, great uh, way to repurpose something. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I love that. I think I might need to make one of those headbands for myself. Of course. <laughs> All right. Do you want to show us your other scrunchie? Yes. John, I'm okay. so curious about this. I've been looking oh, at yeah. it today. So my other scrunchie, let's see, it's this one here. And this particular scrunchie, I actually started with crochet and then went to knit. And we did have somebody ask a question. Emanator asked, I think about my first scrunchie, if you could do this scrunchie with crochet. And the answer is yes, you can do this with crochet. You would just do the same thing. Just make sure you're capturing your hairband in your circular crochet. So yes, you can do that. But this one we're going to do with crochet and knitting. So to start, you just need, again, whichever type of hairband or hair tie you want. I have the same kind, of course, because I have a million of them at home. <laughs> and so we'll start here with a slip knot on our hook. And I'm using the same yarn here again. It's a bamboo cotton blend. I, I really am in like all about this yarn for the hair scrunchies. I just keep <laughs> using it for my hair scrunchies. And so all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our um, hair tie. We've got our slip knot on the hook. We're going to, it's I think similar to what you were doing with capturing the elastic. Yeah. We're just capturing the hair tie. So I'm going underneath the hair tie and then pulling up a loop and then finishing off my single crochet. Mm -hmm. So we're basically just single yeah, crocheting it's right much around. The same, the same thing except your Yeah, it's just the actual hair tie. And yeah. so um, again, you're just going into the center, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through two to finish off the single crochet. And so um, for this particular pattern, um, I would do a multiple of nine stitches um, like basically you want nine single crochets per inch um, you know give or take but you want to have it really kind of full on here so you're not seeing a lot of your hair band you can see here that this one is pretty full I mean I actually have been wearing this one in my hair so it's been getting a little stretched out but you can see the hair band in there but it's just completely surrounded by those single crochets and so from there once you have all of your single crochets on you'll just join it in the round and then you're going to actually be done with your crocheting and we're going to start knitting so let me just keep going around here and i'll show you how to do that let's but see i bet if you if you only crochet and you want to make a crochet version of what you're doing uh, you could just keep crocheting like you could continue crocheting on that instead, right? Oh, Brenda, like funny you mentioned that. <laughs> so this one right here. Oh, oh no, it's <laughs> actually the first. Surprise. No, this one's not in, it's not in the download, but when <laughs> I first started my scrunchie journey and it I was having a, can I make a scrunchie? Um, I did crochet at first. And so this one, I did the same thing where I just did the single crochets around. And then when I got to the end, I put two double crochets into each single crochet stitch uh -oh, to give okay. it a little ruffle. And that's uh -huh. all I did on this one where, oh, that's a great where idea. this one in the download, we're actually kind of combining both and then finishing it off with some knitting. So yeah, there's so much you can do with this. Like 
as far as the scrunchies, the oh, hair no. things going, I mean, the possibilities <laughs> honestly are like completely endless. Oh, Lisa says, I think I have a new project for my three granddaughters, Mommy and Me headbands. Oh, oh that is so cute. That's oh, going to be so cute. Can we jump back to the headbands just for yes, a second? Yes, please. I I'm going to just keep crocheting. In this, because of this um, elastic loops in here, those are what dictate how big your headband is. Mm -hmm. There's really only, I made instructions for two different sizes, but um, those two different sizes can further be altered a lot by making these um, elastic loops to different sizes. So the length of this strip is actually quite a bit longer. Like if you were to take, mm -hmm. if I were to just take all the elastic loops out, this headband would get like at least a couple inches bigger, mm -hmm. much bigger than, you know, human heads. Yeah. <laughs> at least a few inches bigger. Uh -huh. um, but that was because I wanted the elastic to, like I wanted it to be able to stretch out and then snap back. So I didn't want it to be limited by the, mm -hmm. the stretch of the fabric. Gotcha. So when, when you're making these, if you want to make it a lot smaller, you can just have a few less stitches, but also you can make it just to whatever perfect size you want to, just by making that elastic the size that you want it to oh, be. Yeah. That's going to make your headband the right oh, size. Oh, that's that's And you can completely alter that later. Yeah, like, yeah. That's what that was one thing I really liked about this because I've made headbands before where I thought it was going to be the right size, and then I start wearing it, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, oh, this kind of got stretched out. I mm -hmm. wish I could fix this without yeah. a big ugly tuck in it or something. Yeah. But this, you can. Just tie those elastic things tighter. Yeah, that's great. I love yeah. that. That makes it so you can make it for you can make it for any head. Any head. Any head at any all. Any head. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I've crocheted around my hair tie, and then all I just do is just slip stitch to the first stitch, just so it's basically joined in the round. Okay. And then at this point, we're just going to take the crochet hook out, and then let me just grab one of my knitting needles here. And then we're going to start knitting in the round. So I just took that loop off my crochet hook. My yarn's a little splitty here, but you'll just stick that one stitch onto your knitting needle. And then I'm just going to go into each single crochet stitch and I'm just going to pick up and knit. And so you can do this. I, I, I was trying to still hold my yarn like I was crocheting, but now I'm knitting. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to just insert your uh, needle into the stitch, wrap the yarn around to knit, and then pull it through to create knit stitches. And then if you're using your double pointed needles, you would just, you know, put a few on each one, switch to the next needle, and so mm -hmm. on. Um, or if you were using Magic Loop, you'd get around about halfway around. But this is probably the trickiest part of the pattern is just the picking up and knitting. And I'm going under... And you can really do it how you want. It doesn't really matter. But when I'm picking up my stitches, I'm going under both strands of the top of the crochet stitch. So both strands that make that V mm -hmm. on the top, I'm going okay. under both of them to pick up and knit my stitch. And then, so I have a few, and then I'll just, I'll just pull a needle out of this one. So you would get, you know, a third of the stitches on, and then you would just switch to your next needle, insert, wrap it around pull it up and then you would just put a stitch marker because you you would be joined in the round and then you would just follow the rest of the pattern so with this pattern it's just knits and purls and a little bit of increasing um, which all of those videos are on the knitting circle mm -hmm. website um, so I was using some knit front and back and so to do that I'm literally just knitting into the front and then the back of a stitch let me just grab some I'll just show you on this one here um, so when you're doing a knit into the front and back. I'll just knit a couple stitches and then show you here. You'll just knit into the front, keep the stitch on the left needle, come around to the back, go through the back, knit it, and now I have two stitches where I had one. And again, you can watch a video for that on the knitting circle. And then you just bind off. And you just want to make sure that you're using a loose bind off for this because you do want mm -hmm. it to be kind of ruffly. Um, so you can use whatever bind off you like, but if you are somebody that binds off kind of tight, um, maybe go up a needle size or two for the bind off just mm -hmm. so you do get that nice ruffly action. And, yeah. then, and that's all there is to it. And again, 
like your projects, I mean, I didn't block this or anything. I mean, I guess if you wanted to, you know, get your ruffle just right or something, you could <laughs> steam block it. But again, you're going to end up twisting it up in your hair. So yeah. to me, it doesn't really matter yeah, um, about this blocking is, this it. This is the time. You know, usually we're like, block your project, block your project. Yeah. And people are like, oh, come on. Yeah. This but is one of those. Yeah. Make it and immediately. we're telling you, you don't need to block it. Yeah. Just <laughs> make it and start using it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, oh, and Lily says, yes, I'd suggest putting more single crochets on the elastic hair tie than you think you'll need. Mm -hmm. You need enough to let the elastic fully stretch. And that's true, is that if you put too few, and you can see here as I'm stretching it out, I can see my, um, my hair tie, but you, if you have too few, you're not going to be able, you're going to end up like, yeah, you won't it'll be, be able to really stretch it. And obviously depending mm -hmm. on your hair, some people really need to stretch these out mm -hmm. to get them um, in their hair. So, and then when it's in your hair, it is stretched out. So the ruffly bits are going to be, you have to just keep in mind, the ruffly bits are going to be less ruffly when yes. it's stretched out too. Yes. Like if you really want it to be, have a lot of ruffle mm -hmm. to it, yeah. And you just have to add a lot of stitches. Know yeah. that it's going to be, when it's worn, it's going to be stretched. Yep, exactly. And yeah, so again, if you're somebody that only crochets, you can really take that pattern that's in the download for both the knit and crochet scrunchie and just know after you do your single crochets, just do, do whatever you want really mm -hmm. into those single crochets. Like for this one in particular, I just did two double crochets into each single crochet. I had started out trying to do three double crochets into each one. And just for this little bit of fabric, it was almost, uh -huh. it was a little too much, you know, for just doing only one round, yeah. but you could even make it bigger, like keep going yeah, and make, keep going. make something really huge and funky for your hair. I think that would be really awesome. So yeah. Um, yeah, so those are my two scrunchies. I think you made another little something, a, a little a knit. tiny a little, little knitted tidbit here. A little knitted thing. <laughs> Let's see what you got. So um, we've got some toe separators at my house and I was painting my kids toenails mm -hmm. and she has very tiny feet very extra tiny toes and the toe separators we couldn't even put them in there they were made for kids but mm -hmm. they wouldn't even fit and that made me start thinking oh i could just easily like put a little piece of fabric in there oh wait i could make a piece of i cord mm -hmm. and stick it in there and it'd be super cute so this is one of those little projects that is great for scrap yarn if you're going to maybe give somebody a little quick gift and you really don't have a lot of time but you want to make something handmade and mm -hmm. something kind of sweet you could get them a little bottle of nail polish and mm -hmm. then make these little toe separators. So the way these work, imagine this is my foot with my super long, mm -hmm. incredibly dexterous toes, uh -huh. right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so you just put the knot here between two toes, up, down, and up, just like that. So that keeps your toes separated oh, when yeah. you are, uh, you know, painting your toes. So all you need to do is just make I cord, and I have a list of how about how many stitches I used um, to make my my I cord. This was the uh, I think the medium size. This is the large size. And before you put the knots in, like see how much I just wanted to show you when you put the knots in, it really makes it quite a bit shorter. So this is one of those things where you can knit it up. And before you completely finish and weave in all your ends and call it done, mm -hmm. put that knot in loosely and then try it and mm -hmm. see if it's the length yeah. that you want. Because you can just easily adjust it by doing yes. more or fewer rows of the I-cord. So, and if you don't know how to make I-cord, I-cord is super fun to mm -hmm. make. And you can watch a video um, on the Knitting uh, Circle website. And one little tip that I had about making I-cord was I find, and I don't know if other people do this or not, but when I'm working on my I-cord, I get this little jog, especially if you make an I-cord mm -hmm. with a lot of stitch stitches mm -hmm. in it. If it's just four stitches or something, I don't really get that jog. Right. But it's between when you're working the one round and the next. Mm -hmm. You'll see when you watch the, the knitting circle. Yeah. If, you do, if, yeah. you don't, if you don't know how to make I-cord, you'll see when you watch that what I'm talking about. But I ended up with like an area with kind of like a loose stitch or a little jog between, a little space between. But I would take my knitting needle or kind of a blunt uh, tapestry needle or something like that, and I would just kind of push it down like this in oh. between my stitches. And it seemed to even it right out. Like it got rid of that little jog that, you know, was there before. Yeah. I just, it's, it's like you're just sort of 
yanking on the... It's the, almost like blocking the, it without blocking it. Yes, You're exactly. like manipulating the stitches how you want, but you're not like exactly. getting it wet or whatever. And I had thought, oh, maybe I should block this and see mm -hmm. if this goes away. But then I just started poking at it and I'm like, oh, that just went away just wow. like that. Just I never thought like about that. Kind of fixed it and then... Um, and then I didn't, because I didn't really want these to be, I still wanted them to be a tube and kind mm -hmm. of round, and I was worried if I blocked it, it would end up with a flat. Uh, yeah, it'd be flat, like more flat. Which is, right, it's which is fine. Flat. It's going to mm -hmm. get flattened mm -hmm. out in your toes, but I just thought it would be cuter if it looked like yeah. a little bit more of a rope. And um, yeah, so I didn't block. Again, did not block. We, this is like the we didn't block yeah. anything <laughs> session, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you've ever been looking for knitting and crochet patterns where you don't have to block at the end, this is the <laughs> download for you. And, and also, gauge swatches are not very necessary for any of these projects mm -hmm. either. I mean, the closest thing to that, I have a, a recommended gauge for the headband pattern. But uh, what I do is I tell you to make this part of the oh, headband yeah. pattern and use that as your gauge swatch. Yeah. And then if it's good, you're just good to go. Right. Right. So I like to find little sneaky ways of using your gauge swatch in your project. Yeah, you you are very good at that. I've <laughs> noticed that many of your patterns for the Creative Crochet Corner, it's yeah, you've I'm got like, you sneaky can, gauge swatches you in can there. Do I've this noticed. instead yeah, of making I, uh, a gauge swatch because. Yeah. Let's be honest, I don't really like making gauge swatches. That's why I do it. I, I will make gauge swatches and they are important and I don't want to lessen the importance of the gauge swatch because you can save yourself a lot of time by making the gauge swatch. But yet still, it is hard for me to make myself do it. I bet you're a gauge swatcher, aren't you, Jen? <laughs> you're not? No, well, if okay, let me back be up. Be honest. If, I'm, <laughs> if I am making a sweater, oh. I'm making a gauge swatch yes. because a sweater takes a long time to yes. knit or crochet. and I want it to fit. Um, if I'm making, I will do that too. If I'm making an accessory, I will be honest. Most of the time, I am not. But I also know that I am taking a risk by doing exactly. that. Exactly. It's like you just have to sign up and be like, yes. "Well, this mitten is my gauge swatch. If I completely mess it up, yep, I'm you, gonna have yes. to unravel it. You like, have to accept the risk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you, you can't don't. be yeah. mad at the person who wrote the pattern, right? That you skipped the <laughs> critical step of the, the gauge swatch. swatch. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so yes, I, I don't really, I, but the, the weird thing is, is that I like love knitting swatches. So like, and you know, oh, as yeah. being managing editor of the Creative Crochet Corner, like, you know, we do different videos or blog posts or articles. And so we have to like knit swatches or crochet swatches. Uh -huh. I enjoy the process of making a swatch. I just don't want to make a swatch if it's before for a different project. For a different project. Well, maybe that's because your swatch is your project. I guess that's it. Right? In most cases, the, the swatch is, is your, yeah, yeah. That's so very just, true. Yes. Yeah. It's so it's yes. just hard when you're so excited to start the actual project. Yeah. It's hard to make yourself just do that little right. swatch, but. Yeah, I mean, you have to do it. And I have friends who knit sweaters all the time who don't do gauge swatches <gasps> beforehand. And you know, it's the same thing. They know that they are accepting that risk. Oh of, my gosh, is that's, gonna a, fit. that's a lot bigger of a risk when you're making a sweater. A sweater, right? Because like a shawl, I feel like, you yeah. know, I do a lot of top down shawls. So I feel like, okay, if I have to like bind off a little bit earlier because I ran out of yarn or I have to grab a different color, because uh -huh. mostly like I feel like. When you're doing shawls or different accessories and things like that, I feel like, okay, you don't do a gauge swatch for a hat. Okay, you can always find mm -hmm. a head, it will fit. But it's more like, are you going to have enough yarn? Is the right. fabric what the designer intended? Things like that. Right, you know, is the yeah. drape going to be what is, you want? Yeah, and all that the kind drape, of stuff. yeah. yeah. Um, let's see, we do have a couple more little comments in here. Um, Karen says, ah, yes, if you use a hair tie that is the same color as the yarn or close to it, you wouldn't mm -hmm. actually see it. And yes, that's very true is because here I've used a black hair tie on <laughs> with my cream yarn. But that helps for this video. Yes, so it does help see. for this video. Yeah. yeah. But yes, if I was... If you were going to enter that in the state fair, you would yes. use a hair tie that matched your scrunchie. That is right. I would definitely <laughs> use a hair tie that matched the scrunchie if I was <laughs> submitting this for my state fair. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, every You're state has a bunch of scratches <laughs> entered into the yeah, country competition. Yeah, gotta have one of those. Oh, and then Dawn says, I'm loving having crochet and knit together. Well, good. We're awesome. really glad to hear that because yesterday we did a live, which you can mm -hmm. go back and watch, about uh, crocheting and knitting bags out of bags. You heard that right. We, yes. we cut up plastic bags and we made plarn. And we made plarn and then mm -hmm. uh, Brenda crocheted and I knit. So yes, we uh, we, we really enjoy working together mm -hmm. and doing these videos together. And we're hoping that you guys uh, like are it. on board with watching yeah. the other crafts. Even if you're like not quite ready to dip your toes in the other mm -hmm. craft yet, it's yeah. still kind of fun to see 
how somebody else does it. Right, yeah, and maybe, yes, maybe this will make you pick up the other one too, yeah. So there was one more thing that you had in our yeah. download that is unrelated to yarn at yes, all. Yes, has nothing to do with yarn, do you want to talk everything to, about that to do with bit? relaxation. Yes. And since we use yarn to relax, yes. it seemed to fit, right? So, and I was just thinking like, when I was putting this little basket together, I just wanted to pretty it up a little bit. Yeah. And I thought, oh, you know, if you're making this for someone for Mother's Day, Mother's Day is coming up, you guys. Yeah. Um, then you might want to add something else, a little crafty thing in there um, that they can use for their spa day. So this is like the easiest project in the world. Mm -hmm. it takes like a few seconds to make. It's just a, basically a jar with some Epsom, Epsom salts. I've got, um, actually this jar, I have some rose petals in. This is my first time ever drying rose petals. Oh. Like, I put them in a book to press oh, them flat nice. and just left them there for a week. And then there are all these flat little oh, rose petals. So and I pretty. thought they would be a pretty thing to add to my rose bath salts. So you just take a jar, take some Epsom salts, fill it up most of the way, or however much you would want to take in your bath. And then you can add rose petals if you happen to already have a rose, or if you want to buy one rose mm -hmm. and dry them out and take the time to do that, you can do that. Or I bought rose tea. This is these are just little tiny dried oh. rose buds, and you can you know it's for tea, mm -hmm. but they smell nice and they're super cute. Yeah, they're I mean so adorable, cute. right? Yeah. So you just put a little bit of those in there till it looks to your liking. Yeah, and they don't really add a ton of smell to it, just a little bit, but they're mostly there for fanciness. Yeah, just, we just to want to be fancy. And if you're gifting this to someone, it's kind of impressive. They might be like, ooh, you made that? Yeah. Yeah, I dumped three things together. It yeah. took me 30 seconds, yeah. but I'm not going to tell you that. Yeah, part. right. Um, and then this is just rose essential oil. Mm -hmm. You can use whatever essential oils you like. And you just put in a couple of drips. One, two, three, four. That's probably yeah, enough. This, one. this, is, this one is very potent. Yeah. Um, and then. You just close your lid, and I would recommend getting a jar that has a nice tight-fitting lid. This mm -hmm. one, it looks nice, mm -hmm. but the lid doesn't fit as tightly as ah. it can. It's not going to fly out, but when I open this, it might. So I'm going to okay. open it over <laughs> something else. So you just shake it around in there until so you can get the, the salt to mix in with your, um, your little drips of the essential oils. Oh, wait. I'm going to open it in here. Just in case. Just in case. Yeah. We, See, and just in case we're making the salt this. Yep. pouring out of the, my fancy jar. But that would See? just be going like right into your bath. Off. Right. Like you would open it and just. Dump so if it you want to use a fancy jar that doesn't seal very yeah. well, you just go ahead. Oh, I can smell so, that. It smells, smells good. good. <laughs> it smells good. Yeah. Do you, don't you want to take a bath? You can take a bath yeah. today. You can oh yay! <laughs> Ooh, spa day for me. Thanks. <laughs> Ooh. All right. So that is it. I mean, it is super fast. Like, yeah. It takes hardly any time at all, and it looks kind of fancy. And it's just a nice thing to add in. You know, if you don't really like the scent of rose, you could try using lavender tea and some lavender yeah. essential oils or some other, you know, chamomile maybe or yeah. something else. Yeah. You really could but, just make it with whatever smell you like or whoever you're going to give mm -hmm. this to. If you know they like a certain scent, you really, this is very easily uh, adaptable to the person you're making it for. You could put all kinds yeah, of stuff in Yeah. And there. I mean, you don't, if you really don't like scents that much, but you just want to soak in the salts. I mean, it feels really nice on your muscles, mm -hmm. those crochet and yeah. knit muscles, right? Yeah. To soak in that. If you want to just soak in that and just put the rose, you know, or some dried tea or, you know, with the pretty flowers in mm -hmm. it to make it look fancy and yeah. make you feel fancy, you don't have to put the essential oils in if, if you're just not a scent person. Right. You know, yeah. Just have a very mild right. scent. Because some people, it, you know, yeah, some people are sensitive to that. Yeah. So, so you want to be careful about that. Well, um, we're getting close to the end of our time. Do you have any uh, final thoughts or anything else you want to share with us? I, boy, I just really hope that you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. Yeah. And I hope that um, you guys make some cool spa things and relax because everybody deserves a little bit of relaxation yeah. time. Taking yeah. care of yourself. Or, you know, you can gift it to someone. Yeah, mm -hmm. gift it to somebody who needs a little <laughs> relax. You need to relax. Yeah, you need to I relax. A here's, here's a <laughs> spa day. Go relax, please. <laughs> yeah. So, well, thank you so much, Brenda. This was so much fun. I hope that we yeah. get to do a few more of these in the future with yeah. us together, sharing both knit and crochet, because we both love to knit and crochet, and we want to share that love with all of you. And I just want to remind everybody that if you do decide to make anything from the download or anything we did here today sort of inspires you to take it a step further make it your own be sure to share it with us on social media mm -hmm. um, if you're on social media you can 
uh, join. We have Facebook groups for both the Knitting Circle and Creative Crochet Corner. You can tag us on Instagram. We're on TikTok. Um, and both websites also have a project gallery. So you can actually take your photo, if you even whether you have social media or not, you can do this. Um, you can take your photo and upload it onto the project gallery on our website. And we would love to see what you make. I love mm -hmm. going through those project galleries yeah, on I both sides. I love it too. It's so fun to see what other people create. I mean, we're yeah. just always so interested to see what our viewers are making. Right, and yeah. I, yeah, I get so inspired and it also helps us like see what our viewers are making mm -hmm. and the people using the websites are making and that kind of helps us decide um, what kind of projects yeah, we're going to bring exactly. to you in the future as mm -hmm. well. We so like we, to know what you're interested yeah, in. Yeah, we do want to know what you're interested in because we want to bring you obviously patterns that you like. So, well, thank you so much for joining us and thanks Brenda for yeah, being here you, with Jen. me today and we'll see you all again soon and happy knitting and crocheting. <laughs>